This is the Allstate Saturday kickoff. The ACC Wheel of Destiny has landed on Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Heinz Field, the site for a battle for the Coastal Division, Virginia Tech, and Pitts on this chilly Saturday afternoon. The winner takes control of perhaps America's wackiest division. Just about everybody left in the Coastal has a chance to win this thing, move on to face Clemson or BC. Kevin Brown, Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Some processes in life are orderly. <laughs> There's the alphabet. A precedes B, precedes C, etc. You have psalmization. Do, re, mi, fa. Some things go in order. Not the ACC Coastal. No, I mean, it's uh, it's basically up for grabs, as you described. You look at that graphic, and everybody at the end of the season has a chance pretty much to, uh, to grab it. You like it as a college football fan because there's no uh, winner that just is going to take it and run away with it. So I, I actually like it. And who could have seen Pitt in yeah. the driver's seat a few weeks ago? They were two and three due to a one-two punch on the ground, though they have exploded into the lead. Yeah, they've got one of the better one-two punches at running back than a lot of people in the country. And Quadre Olison and Darren Hall, two guys that can flat out get it done. And with Quadre, a big back with a lot of power, and he's got speed to break tackles. The guy that went over 190 yards a couple of weeks ago against Syracuse. Darren Hall is just an excellent speed back. He's got power, a one cut back that a lot of people like, and he's hit several home runs throughout the season. So when you line up against Pitt, be ready for this one two punch for 60 minutes. Well, at the start of the year, any one two punch for the Hokies would have included Josh Jackson. He goes down with a leg injury and the stunner at Old Dominion. And now Virginia Tech has turned to Ryan Willis, the transfer from Kansas. Yeah, he, and he's been steady the last couple of weeks. A guy that has really come into his own, cal has calmly led this team the last couple of weeks. Damon Hazelton, they have tremendous chemistry. He's had a touchdown catch in seven of the last eight games. It's a nice, they kind of a one-two punch of their own. They just get it done in a different manner. Pitt won the toss and deferred, rocking those blue and yellow throwbacks, and the kick in the end zone will lead to a Virginia Tech touchback starting at the 25-yard line for the Hokies. 32 degrees, a wind chill of 22, a little bit blustery today. Saw about six or seven snow flurries out of our hotel window this morning. It is a chilly, chilly afternoon for football. Ryan Willis from an athletic family. His dad played at Kansas State. His mom was an All-American track star at Iowa State. Big athlete in his own right. Start with a jet sweep. Speaking of sons of good athletes, Terrius Wheatley, who's the son of Tyrone Wheatley, takes it for 10 at a first down. Former 10-year pro in the NFL, currently coaches the Jacksonville Jags Jaguar running backs. It's Tyrone Wheatley and Darius Wheatley, six foot, 197 pounds. Didn't expect him to start the game. Stephen Peoples bat right back in the ball game for uh, for Virginia Tech. Willis to throw for the first time, and he completes it to his big target, Eric Kuma, six two junior. Two first downs on two plays. This one a gain of 14. Yeah, they say he's got excellent hands. He's not the fastest receiver, but he just catches everything thrown his way. And you just give him a jump ball type situation. He usually comes down with it. This is Stephen Peoples shoulder to the ground after a good pickup on first down four yards before Rashad Weaver made the hit. Yeah, Peoples is arguably their best offensive weapon a former walk on. They will spread him out just about everywhere and try to get him the football. It will be a heavier workload for Peoples today. No Deshaun McLeese, who is Virginia Tech's second leading rusher. He was hurt against Boston College last week, did not make the trip. So expect a heavy dose of peoples in the backfield as he takes it for two. I wanted to stop the run. That was first and foremost for Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator for, for Pitt. Big third down situation to get themselves off the field. Haven't been real good in that, that category this year. Willis swings it. Peoples out of the backfield. He is wrestled down. Elijah Zeiss, the money linebacker, with a money play and a loss of two. Yeah, Zeiss 
with excellent inside out speed and when you get in the open field you have to make tackles people's trying to outflank the defense and run for the first down Zeese is right there to make a nice play Oscar Bradburn's punt fair caught by Rafael Arujo Lopes after a kick of 36 good start to this ball game for the Pitt Panthers what a quick look on a third down in which they get themselves off the field and I tell you what Pat Narduzzi the head coach has got to be excited about that along with Randy Bates the defensive coordinator they were giving up 46 percent on third downs this year coming in that is about 1 16th in the country in that category so this first defensive stop to force a punt and now it's the pit offense with Quadri Olison getting the first handoff and getting a shot in the back after a short game quarterback for Pitt it's senior day but it is a sophomore starter Kenny Pickett who took over at the end of last year of course led the Panthers to the big win over Miami he has started all season and been perfect in this stadium in conference games yeah they give him a lot at the line of scrimmage he can check in and out of plays and you know he handles a lot up front in terms of redirecting the running game on the rollout picket completes it to Arujo Lopes for a gain of three and it's important for him to get off to a nice start you think Pitt you think this running game and a big offensive line with Olison and Hall but you've got to have five guys up front if you're going to run the football consistently and then pick it with the passing game that's where I think this game is going to be won on one side of the line or the other it's who can deliver the football accurately through the air to move the team when need be Pitt has not been great on third downs this year Pickett will throw it though and a dart is reeled in by Taysir Mack first yeah. down for Mack the transfer from Indiana yeah Sean Watson told us he's probably the best all-around wide receiver excellent playmaker and he just kind of gave the look that he was going deep hooked up along the sideline and Pickett with a nice with the nice timing pass on the outside shoulder away from the defensive back all those little technical things get you completions first down after a gain of nine George asked to the fullback motions to the left and now returns to the right the run will go to Olis into the left and he is swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage Taiwan Garbett and Dax Hollifield got there on a loss of three yeah, there were a lot and I mean a lot of defenders inside the box for Bud Foster first down look at all the defenders inside that seven man box in there everybody's packed in they're defending the run on first down not going to give up much to to Olison and this pit running game early in the game they're going to have to throw it I think today Kevin to establish any kind of running game pick it two for two so far another short one that's caught by Maurice French and Tyree Rogers is on top of him immediately this Virginia Tech defense is down to its second and third string Andre yeah. in some key cases they lost a lot coming back this year a bunch of underclassmen declared early a couple of players were dismissed and they've had some injuries so it is a beat up unit for yeah, Foster. Lost nine starters from last year and he said we, when we talked to him last night it's his most inexperienced group that he's ever had since he's been at uh, at Virginia Tech that they have to put on the field and only one senior Ricky Walker is in this group and plays and starts for the majority of the, of the snaps pick it with a clean pocket and delivers reeled in with an initial bobble by Mac just about on cue they saw Mac gonna run a nice post route and come right in the middle of the field and then dime a throw on the money from Kenny Pickett Co Co coaches told us he said football just kind of comes to him easily tell you what he threw a pass there made it look easy to Mac who had to you know had to reel it in got hit the balls bouncing around but he was able to hold on to it Javon Quillen hit him but Mac hangs on for 26 
Panthers into Virginia Tech territory with a first down play action and pick it with all sorts of space. Boy, Virginia Tech sold out for the run, and it's Pickett who can move, running for a first down. Well, he got a heck of a block on the outside. It looked like Maurice French, the wide receiver to that side. They go crashing down because why? You're thinking run on first down, and there's a lot of room and green grass in front of Kenny Pickett. But then you get the unselfish play. You hear me talk about that every single week. Guys on the outside making blocks, doing the dirty work. In that case, it was Maurice French. 17 yards on the run for Pickett. True sophomore from Oakhurst, New Jersey. Pickett will give it up to Darren Hall. Well, you need those, those, you know, work workhorse kind of players. The guys that want to get in and do the dirty work. The Draymond Greens, the the Dennis Rodman types. You want those guys on your team because they're going to dive for loose balls. And in this case, when it's a receiver on the edge, you know, you're making nice blocks for a guy like Darren Hall, who last week just flat out went off against Virginia. And he did that because of those blue-collar offensive linemen, those receivers on the outside. He ran for 229. Mike Herndon, the right guard, was the offensive lineman of the week in the conference. A faker run behind him here. Pickett has a one-on-one -on -one matchup looking for French. He threw that block a couple of plays ago, and he overshot him with yeah, Rodgers and Cubbard. You can see it coming, packing everybody inside. You had press man-to-man -man outside. And if you hit a couple of those, you get Bud Foster out of it. But if you don't, you see it all day. And those are the big guys up front paving the way for both Olison and as well as Hall and then providing Kenny Pickett with some nice pass protection. Notice a common theme there. Senior. A bunch of under seniors. Four of those five names. And then the center, Morrissey, is sophomore. All recognized on this Pitt senior day. Last home game for this group at Hines. Pickett lost the ball on what looked like it was a designed run. And then Ricky Walker came in to clean him up. It looked as though Sean Watson and Pat Narduzzi Trying to fool Bud Foster. He just lost the football. And you see the gloves. It's a cold day today. With Ricky Walker in there to make the stop. But I, maybe Pitt was okay with trying to field goal with that play call. Well, they have one of the longest distance kickers in the nation in terms of accuracy from deep, Alex Kessman who has the stadium record for long field goal. And this one from 47 is perfect. No problem. Kessman hit from 55 earlier in the year, longer than any pro or college kicker at Heinz Field. And on a cold day, he puts Pitt in the lead. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Justin Fuente in his third year at Virginia Tech. At Narduzzi in his fourth year at Pitt. He's trying to get off the, the goose egg against Justin Fuente. 0-2 against Virginia Tech under his leadership. In both awfully close games. Steven Peoples, the starting running back in his own goal line, and Peoples nearly broke it. Finally gang-tackled to the 34 after a return of 35. Justin Fuentes Hokies back on offense for the second time when we return to Pittsburgh. The All-State Saturday kickoff is presented by All-State, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Panthers fired up pregame by the two-time captain Dennis Briggs, the first two-time captain here since Aaron Donald. Pitt with the lead and College football is not done yet, folks. You can still stream it on ESPN Plus, along with boxing, Serie A, NHL, and a whole host of other sports and leagues. Start your free trial today. That's free. That's no money by downloading the ESPN app or going to ESPNPlus.com. We hope you've done it by now, but if not, there is still plenty of time. Ryan Willis, second drive for Virginia Tech. 
Throws it up for a fade, and it's reeled in by Eric Kuma. And this, Andre, is exactly what both coaching staffs knew we'd get. Fades and back shoulder throws against his press coverage. Yeah, you get a big guy like Kuma, and it's almost unfair for the smaller six-foot Dane Jackson to that side. Play of 21. Here's a dump off to the tight end. Dalton Keene for only a yard. Well, they do a nice job. I was watching film with this play, and they hide him, sneak him behind the offensive line after a play fake, and Virginia Tech's actually speeding up tempo. I hadn't seen him do that. A couple of first downs on the first drive. They're in Pittsburgh territory on the second. Willis. Swings it again into the flats. Hezekiah Grimsley and Pitt is all over this play. Short gain with DeMar Hamlin there leading tackler in on the stop. And sometimes you do that just to try to get a spark. And you try to speed it up, take the thinking out of it for the quarterback and the rest of the offense. And you're just running plays trying to put pressure on a defense. No Damon Hazelton on this third down play. Kuma at the bottom of your formation there, second leading target. Willis, hit, down he goes. Rashad Weaver got him for a loss of a yard. Yeah, I think he had time, and, and Kuma did come open. Ran a corner route down inside, and if he just steps up in the pocket without running, it's a split second. You're going to take a hit. But it's a split second you need to get the ball out to the receiver Kuma on the outside instead the sack is there and they're going to force another punt by Virginia Tech tells you what kind of game Justin Fuente thinks this is going to be going field position here with a punt from the 41 and that will net only 21 a touchback off the kick by Bradburn. Rashad Weaver with five and a half sacks to lead the Panthers. And he kills a hokey drive. Sacked by Rashad Weaver ended that last Virginia Tech drive. Pitt with the football and Pitt's destiny is within its hands. With a win today, the Panthers, according to FBI, are 85% favorites to win the Coastal. Now Virginia Tech can win. Does FBI have to play? <laughs> Do they have to no. get on the field and play? No. But okay. Virginia Tech wins, according to FBI. They become the favorites with only a 33% chance. So if you want chaos, Hokies winning gives you that. Here's a potentially chaotic play. The ball pops out late on the run by Olison, but he was ruled down. So it's a big gainer of 27 on the first play of this drive. Oh, a nice big hole along the left side of this pit offensive line. and. Boy, this kid is really impressed watching him this week. It's been fun to watch both he and Darren Hall do their thing. So breaking down film, and you see why everybody is enamored with these two backs at, at Virginia, excuse me, at Pitt. That's the task for Bud Foster, 23rd year defensive coordinator. Find a way to stop these two. For a Pitt team that's run it. For nearly 231 a game, third in the ACC. Wow. Pickett swarmed under here by a couple of Hokies. Dax Hollifield, the outstanding freshman, making his second straight start with a loss of eight. Boy, he brings great energy to this defense. And as a true freshman that Bud Foster just kept raving about in last night's meeting with him. Comes free on a blitz. He put Pitt behind the down and distance marks, Marcus, and that's exactly where Bud Foster wants it. We haven't heard many coaches be that effusive in their praise yeah. for a particular player, let alone a true freshman. But they think Hollifield is a future star in this program. Darren Hall slips through the middle. Hall is a game breaker. He gets out of an ankle tackle and is finally taken down inside the Hokie 10. It took Caleb Farley, the 100 meter state champion in the state of North Carolina, to track down Darren Hall. And that's after he slips on a couple of occasions. Out runs one, breaks another tackle, and then here comes Farley to track him down. Luckily, they have the state 
100 meter champion in the defensive backfield for Virginia Tech. Otherwise, Hall's dancing in the end zone. Boy, that looked like last Friday night, didn't it? <clears throat> really did. What a talent. Ran it last week for more than 200 at Virginia, the National Offensive Player of the Week, with a couple of breakaway scores. First and goal for Pitt here, and this is unsettled. We get a whistle before the play. It doesn't get any better for Pitt or before anyone when you. Timeout was called by Pitt. Timeout. Timeout, Panthers. We'll take it with them. First and goal. Justin Fuentes' defense made a fairly famous goal line stand last year. They're still talking about it this week, the game week against Pitt. Panthers were down six in Blacksburg, got down to the one, yeah. and were stopped on four straight plays. The stake's not as high right now, but he's hoping his Hokies well, can come through. It's high when you go on the road. You don't want to trail. There were two things that, and I'll get into that after this play, but you need another stop here and force a, then force a field goal. Wadri Olison. Olison upended into the end zone. Touchdown pit. What a one two punch. And it doesn't get any better when you don't lose anything. When you take one back out that breaks one for 53 to give him a break in Darren Hall, and then you bring Olison in to finish things off. Well, I tell you, and then they've got big George Aston. The fullback, who's just a mauler. 35 right there. Reading on the run. Nice block to free it up for Quadri Olison. Eighth rushing touchdown. That temporarily breaks a tie with Hall. And the extra point wobbles through from Alex Kespin. Four plays, 80 yards. That was a big 53-yard run by Hall to set this up. A great block by Aston, the fullback, and then the rest delivered by Olison. We told you off the top, you have about as good a one-two punch as anybody in the ACC. Olison and Hall, six carries already, 90 yards in a score. And they are two close guys. I mean, got a chance to visit with them. They're just, they can finish one another's sentences. They're so close. They even, go to the same barber now for their haircut. <laughs> Used to go to the same place to get their haircut. Now they use the yeah. same barber. Same barber shop. Now it's the same barber. And they spent a lot of time together. Rarely do you see two players that are unselfish. They root for one another, the success of the other. And, and in they, direct competition. Yeah, and you too. see it. You see them in the room together. You know it's genuine. It's not just, you know, just there for the, the purpose of, of putting on any front. They they genuinely care for one another. So two possessions, two scores for Pitt. Firing up this Heinz Field crowd on senior day with a chance to essentially knock the Hokies out of the Coastal Race. ABC tonight, the Atlantic Division race is down to more or less two. Clemson and Boston College, the winner will control the Atlantic. Game day was there this morning, a frenzied crowd in Chestnut Hill, and tonight should be awesome. 8 Eastern on ABC. Can A.J. Dillon get going? That's another good, you know, head-to-head -head in terms of running backs. He has been nursing an ankle injury since we were there against Temple, and well, he gets going to make that thing a game. Clemson is on a mission right now. Banged up again last week in BC's win at Virginia Tech, 31 to 21. Do you think BC can hang with Clemson? Uh, yeah, they can hang for about a quarter, two quarters. Okay. <laughs> I just don't think they have enough firepower. Once Clemson gets going, and then that big defensive line of Clemson is going to give AJ Dillon some problems. So. I, I like Clemson to win the game. I like them to win it going away as we get, you know, after they come out of the half. Second down, Virginia Tech Peoples is swallowed up after maybe a couple of inches. Jazzy Stocker got him down, and it's another third down for the Hokies. Just to put a bow on that, I think Clemson is one of those teams that are, they're peaking right at the right time for Dabo Swinger. At the quarterback finally going, a running game to complement, and a defense that 
Doesn't back away from anybody. Willis fires one complete for a first down. Second catch for Hezekiah Grimsley. And seven yards for the Hokies' first third down conversion. Yeah, they usually like Grimsley on crossing routes and underneath routes. There they showed some zone coverage. So what are you doing? Zone, sit down and give the quarterback a target. This one delivered and dropped right on the money oh, to wow. Eric Kuma. And you talk about sitting in, taking a lick. Brian Willis knew he was going to take a shot, kind of pulled it down and ran earlier in the game and, that, and was sacked. But that one, yeah, Jalen Twyman, the defensive tackle, Twyman right in the middle coming at him, and he delivered a dime to Kuzma, who rarely drops it. Willis took a couple of shots last week, missed a little bit of time in that BC game, and a win knocked out of him. Hands it off here, and Peoples loses three on the play. Big Patrick Jones. The rolling on the field, the runner was down. On the outside, holding the edge and playing leverage, not going to allow the play to get outside of it. What a first quarter this was for the Pitt Panthers. Winners of three of their last four, trying to move to five and one in the ACC Coastal. They've scored on both drives, and they're shutting out the Hokies. You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. Back to Heinz Field, where Virginia Tech has a third and 12 to start the second quarter. Hokies with two punts and two drives. Ryan Willis, nowhere to throw, or at least he thought, so he takes it and runs for a gain of nine. Put him three yards shy of a first down. Not a close. A little bit closer, Justin Fuente would have to entertain. Maybe going for it to try to capture some momentum in this game. Pitt's defense has been quite magical, and especially, Kevin, on third downs. Hokies have moved the ball a little bit. They've made it across midfield. Last time, though, Bradburn punted it into the end zone for a net of only 21. Rujo Lopes will field this inside his 10 and make his way to the sideline. It's more or less a touchback as he gets out near the 20. A turn of 13. Time for our drive recap brought to you by Jared. It was a quick one for Pitt. Four plays, 80 yards into the end zone. Yeah, a couple of big drives. It actually got started with a 17-yard run by Kenny Pickett. And then Olison comes up with a big run. They give it to Darren Hall. He goes 53 yards, almost houses this baby, but gets tracked down by the speedy Caleb Farley. They go right back to Olison picking up a nice block by George Aston to get into the end zone and Pitt up 10 nothing here early. Kenny Pickett to throw against a seven man box airs it out and Maurice French has got it. There goes French in a foot race touchdown. The last drive was four plays. That one took a little bit too long. 78 yards to the house for French, their big play receiver, and Pitt is rolling. And I think the thing I loved most about the play was the chest bump by big Mike Herndon and Alex Bookster, the right guard and right tackle, respectively. But this is perfectly timed, and then French with tremendous speed in his own right, outracing the secondary of Virginia Tech to the end zone. What a throw by Kenny Pickett. Virginia Tech doesn't watch it. Yeah, Justin Fuente and his crew, it could be a long afternoon. Big play after big play. Maurice French on the end of that one, putting Pitt up 17-0. ESPN app.
now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Longest throw of Kenny Pickett's career. 78-yard play to Maurice French. Panthers have scored on all three drives in this battle for the ACC Coastal. Steve and Peoples on the run back for Virginia Tech breaks a tackle and Peoples makes a play in the return game up near midfield. There's no let up in Steven Peoples. Does a lot for this Virginia Tech team. Run back of 40, 44 for Peoples on the play. Veterans Day tomorrow, and what a fitting matchup this is. Mike Krzyzewski against his old team, Army, heads to Cameron Indoor to take on Duke. One Eastern on ESPN. Who's that gentleman we're showing you? Well, it's a former Duke assistant coach, Jeff Capel, who came over from Duke this year to take over the men's basketball team at Pitts. What a rebuilding job he has in front of him. Jalen Olston with a run of three on this first drive for Virginia Tech. Cape will get his second win yesterday for the Panthers. 2-0 to start the year. Showing some commitment, some support to the football program, and athletics overall kind of out in the elements today. I'm impressed with it. Couldn't get you to sit out there, of course. I'd be watching it from a box, though. <laughs> Here's Willis on second down. Incomplete with Trey Turner, the freshman, the target, and some single coverage from Damari Mathis, the sophomore. Yeah, he just missed time to the throw. Has actually has Mathis beaten, and he just missed times it. All goes right, pretty much right through his hands. That's one that you'll look at and film study either tomorrow or Monday and wish you had that one back. On another third down, Willis fires one to an open man. This time he hooks up with Turner. Trey Turner, the freshman, has 11 grabs on the year. Ten of them have gone for a first down or a touchdown. And they're trying to go tempo, but he ran one heck of a route. And credit Ryan Willis for, for hanging with the true freshman, Trey Turner. Almost feels like a must-score drive early on, the way that Pitt has moved the ball. And a first down run for well, Holston for a yard. Whenever I played on the road, there were two things I wanted to start a game. I wanted the football first, and I wanted to get on the scoreboard uh, early and first before the, the home team. Because then you put the pressure on the home team to have to match what you're doing. Virginia Tech had the football first. They were forced to punt it. They bring in Quincy Patterson, the freshman, to run the ball. Yeah. And he gets nothing. Celine Brightwell on the stop. And didn't do anything with it early. And then they allowed, or actually have allowed Pitt on the scoreboard three times. So now all the pressure resides on the sideline of the guys in the white jerseys. They, they, you know, you talk about a must score this drive. They need to put something on the scoreboard right here. Willis back in the game, third and nine. Here comes the pressure. He gets rid of it quickly. It's Sean Savoy, and Savoy slides down. It depends on the spot. He's right near the 23-yard line where he needed to get, and he appears to be just a little bit short. Yeah, just shy, but it's so close. They're going to have to measure this one. Jerry Magalanis, our referee, is calling for the chain gap. I think you have to go for this for sure, right? No question. Oh, I, I think so. But, you know, it's it's just a matter of how do you pick it up because Pitt has owned the line of scrimmage and they won't have to make that decision. I think it's good. If it's touching, it's a first down. Let's see. Oh, my. He calls it, I don't know if it's that much, but it's, it's short. Looked like it was touching almost. Fourth and millimeters, yeah. can we say? Yeah, don't mess with this one. Get under center and run the quarterback sneak. You get a big quarterback in Willis. That's that big. Narduzzi wants to make sure he knows just how much it is. And a big center, too, and Zachariah Hoyt get behind that big fella and, and gets a push. All six foot four of Ryan Willis. I wouldn't take it back to Peebles because you allow for penetration and as I mentioned earlier, Pitt has owned the trenches. 
There's the sneak. Willis, that's more than enough for the first down. Well, a smart heads up play. Found a nice soft spot. And was able to get pushed, and the drive continues for Virginia Tech. That's, Kevin, you need to continue this and get some points. That defense of Virginia Tech needs a rest. They have played a lot of football here early. Willis play fake and as he throws he took a shot at the end of that play it was Dwayne Hendricks who had two and a half sacks last week and just planted Willis yeah the best game of his career arguably against Virginia and is very well respected by his teammates and plays like that uh, you, you, you see exactly why he is always and I mean always in the backfield when you turn the film on That one is batted. It is a forward pass. Rashad Weaver knocked it down. It was immediately yeah. ruled forward, so an incompletion. We talk about the one-two punch of the backs in Olison and and uh, and Hall. They've got a nice one-two punch of defensive end as well, and Hendricks and Weaver. Coaches just rave about those two. He, Weaver just a sophomore, smart player, really studies the game has tremendous physical talents at 6'5", 260. He's the team's best playmaker up front. Pat Arduzzi told us he has made the other defensive linemen want to be smarter. He sees them coming to practice with wristbands now and studying plays. Timeout. Timeout. Pitt. Pitt. Timeout. Timeout for Weaver's group before yet another third down. Now Dwayne Hendricks right on your screen two and a half sacks last week a transfer from Tennessee a redshirt senior one of the many seniors for this pick class honored before the game on senior day he and his front line Andre have been very good so far today why have they succeeded well I, I think they just feed off one another they study the game especially Weaver who studies formations the positions of backs in the backfield so it gives you a chance as a defensive lineman to really know what's coming or what play is being run and that gives a tremendous advantage got linebackers in the gaps right now they show pressure the Panthers do on a third and ten it's a rush of five Willis's throw is short and incomplete target was Hazelton brings up a fourth down at ten well, and credit Willis he stood in the pocket as long as he possibly could and that's his guy Hazelton trying to wait him out it's a third down critical situation where they need to convert and you knew he was going to try to find number 14. So Brian Johnson has attempted one field goal in the last three games and missed it. Well, he needs this one. This from 40 Johnson's kick is no good. The Hokies come up empty again. We're back in 30 seconds to pit. Pit football and that pass would have been better off dropped. A loss of two on the catch by Arujo Lopes. So a missed field goal from 40 yards out by Johnson. Virginia Tech uncharacteristically poor in a special teams area and now Pitt has it with three scores and three drops uh, there they were setting up to take a deep shot that you know all the wins out of the sails of a team you drive down you need points you trail by 17 and your kicker misses be surprised if they don't go to the middle here with with one of these deep shots Give it on the run instead. Here is Darren Hall. There goes Darren Hall. Another game-breaking run. Hall eludes a tackler. Inside the 25, Reggie Floyd finally ran him down. Call it a 53-yard run earlier goes for 58. Holy moly. You talk about one cut and let's get it. That's Darren Hall, baby, with steam coming off the shoes from the cold surface he's lighting up everybody in the first half of this one wow 
Not many have won the National Offensive Player of the Week award back to back weeks. But Halder ran for 220 plus last week as 114 yards just on three carries. Yeah, and last week, 19 carries for 229. Quadriolis now is stuck in the backfield. Tackle for loss by Divine Diablo, who is wearing the number 25 today. That is given to the Hokie who makes the biggest contribution on special teams the previous week. The reason is 25. That's Frank Beamer's old number, the longtime Hokie coach who played at Tech and then was known as one of the great teachers of special teams in the game. Yeah, when we talked to Ricky Walker, he talked about that and he said, you know, he's never been anywhere that they've worked special teams so much. Other coaches that are on the staff, he's asking, you know, have they, other places they've been, have they worked special teams that much? And that answer was a big no. Pickett didn't like what he saw there with the play clock winding Time down. Pitt, Pitt, their third Pitt and final timeout, timeout of the half. Of the used half. all its timeouts. 30 second timeout. Midway through the second. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to that university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. If you're just joining us, it has been a rout to date. Pitt has been terrific on third down. Held the Hokies to three punts and a missed field goal. Meanwhile, on the other side, they've been perfect so far. Just been just about perfect. Two touchdowns and a field goal, and their four drives. And this being the fourth, a chance to yeah. make it four for four. And in position once again to put points on the board. Pitt, which played a grueling, grueling non-conference schedule, has really hit its stride toward the end of conference play. Winners of two in a row. He took out two two weeks ago. One at Virginia last Friday. Keep it on the ground. Olison tried to break through and runs it across the 20 for about five. Pat Narduzzi went through it yesterday with us. He went through all the teams that have played as many top 25 teams as his had. There aren't many. This is just in the non-conference. Penn State, UCF, and then that Notre Dame game maybe a turning point for them they lost but only by five against the top five team yeah and have caught some fire as of late two wins in a row against Duke and Virginia and it seemed to have turned their season around Pickett on third down a design run for Pickett who's got the first down wriggling free and the ball is out in the end zone and it's picked up by Virginia Tech's Rico Kearney Boy, that's this might be the shot in the arm that Bud Foster and this defense needed. Able to force a fumble on Kenny Pickett. The, field, the runner fumbled into the end zone. It was recovered by Virginia Tech. Kearney in his second career start on the football to the end zone. Hokies have it. Pick comes up empty on its fourth drive, and it didn't look like the Panthers were going to end this with a zero. Kenny Pickett loses the ball. There's Jermaine Waller, Andre, to knock it out at the five. Yeah, you get in that crowded area, you picked up the first down. Both hands have to go on it to try to secure it, and luckily for Virginia Tech, they do force the fumble. On the sweep, this is Wheatley. And I say that, Kevin, because it was about to get ugly. You know, you're knocking on the door of 24 to nothing and a lot of pressures being applied. They're going to get the ball first to start the second half. It's just a tough hill to, to climb if you get yourself uh, that far behind. Keep it on the ground with Peoples. Well, Virginia Tech, a team over the years known for its success defensively in the turnover battle specifically. They were plus five in the opener against Florida State. Or minus two on the season since then. And that was an absolutely crucial one. And yeah. Because of the touchback with the ball in the end zone, you get a couple of plays. Now you're out at the 35 over. Because of that decent field position today, 
Willis waits here, fires it low, and Hazelton's there to reel it in. The ball came free. It's picked up by Stephen Peoples, the running back down the field, and that leads to a monster gain for Virginia Tech. Not sure if Hazelton was down initially, but this is a nice, nice play, making it look like quarterback draw, and then you 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 get a defender. Mathis to break away just enough. They're trying to run it. Yeah, they're going to review this. Every play, remember, every play in college football is reviewed. Field. It was a completed pass and a fumble recovered by Virginia Tech and advanced. The play is under review. They're going to check and see if Hazelton was indeed down. But I like the, just the, the complexity of the play, making it look like quarterback draw or counter. And then as soon as Hazelton broke free, raise up and give it to him. I think he was definitely down. The knees that down, the obvious. elbows down. This is coming back to about the 44-yard line or so. The only question would be, was the ball at all bobbled? Was it loose before no. he hit the ground? No. Doesn't seem to be anything definitive in that case. No. I think the knee was definitely down, the elbow hit, and then the ball came out. So this is coming back. There's the knee right there. Great camera angle, good work by our crew. The elbow is down, and then it comes out. It's that connection that Ryan Willis told us about when we sat down with him yesterday. Damon Hazelton has become his favorite target during games, but he was by far his favorite target last year on the scout team. Yeah. The two of them were transfers, Willis in from Kansas, Hazelton from Ball State, and they threw the ball so much, or, or Willis threw the ball so much to Hazelton that Greg Stroman, who's now in the NFL with Washington, would, would yell at him. <laughs> Willis said, I just threw to him every play. And they've developed this amazing nonverbal relationship yeah. that finally connects here for first time. It's, it's being able, when you get to that level of reading your receiver's body language, so you know when he's getting ready to come out of a route even before he does. And so when you can build that kind of chemistry, you've got something special. And it seems like Ryan Willis and him and Hazelton are, are right on track with that. Rusty Acre is our replay official. We're going to get one more look at this. This has taken a surprisingly long time. Again, does the ball come out before the elbow is down for Hazelton? Well, Pitt thinks so because they're going all the way back to where Hazelton was down. But the knee is, I think, the thing that tells me it's going to be ruled down. Remember, the ruling on the field was fumble, so it has to be definitive to overturn. The ruling on the field, the runner was down at the 44-yard line. It will be first and 10. Please reset the game clock to 6 minutes, 56 seconds. Thank and you. that's probably part of the process, why that took so long to review. Where's the yard line? What's the time? Everything sorted out. No fumble and a gain of 21. So Virginia Tech has moved it to the pit 44. Hokies last drive ended in a missed field goal. They've been across midfield for more than half their plays today. He's got what he wants up top. Press coverage. Safety down low. Yep, Willis looking that way. One on one coverage. A lot of hand fighting and two flags are out with Eric Kuma and Dane Jackson in coverage for Pitt. Yeah, you just see it in pre-snap read. And Kuma is his jump ball of 50 50 players defense number 11 automatic first down well he and hazelton have the capability but today it's been the matchup with kuma on the outside against dane jackson a smaller corner and you see him there just enough of, enough of the jersey to draw the flag it's the first accepted penalty of the game Seen a flag thrown to the 646 mark of the second. Here comes the heat. Willis, Kuma's wide open again, and he will score. Touchdown, Tech. 29 yards. Willis goes to Kuma to draw the pass interference. 
and on the very next play, right back to number 83. Yeah, they go with a smash route. We call it switch corner, where you switch responsibilities with a tight end or the slot receiver, and then he goes back to the corner. Thought he had it earlier in the game when he got sacked, stayed with it there, and Kuma rewards him. And how about rewarding the defense for getting themselves a turnover, get you the ball back, and Virginia Tech's able to punch it in. You bring in the freshman Jordan Stout for the extra point after a missed field goal by Johnson. He makes it 17-7. Kuma and the Hokies on the board. The All-State Saturday kickoff is brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Care makes a man stronger. Hall of Famer Tony Dorsett, honored during the break here at Pittsburgh, 1976 Heisman Trophy winner. They call it running back you here at Pitt, and they can make a good argument for that. Dorsett, one of the best to ever do it. Boy, he was special and fun to watch. Just kind of glided down the field. That oh, was pretty to watch. All right, so there are a lot of universities that held claim to RBU, running back university. Pitt, Tony Dorsett, of course, 73 to 76, three-time All-American. Far from the only one, Ironhead Hayward in the mid-80s. And then who could forget Curtis Martin before his outstanding NFL career. LaShawn McCoy for a couple of years, leading the Panthers in the Big East. He had Deion Lewis in there as well, and the most recent star plays in this stadium. He was here Thursday night. James Conner now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. What, what a story what a he tradition has too. been, and you're right. Conner is lighting it up this season. Pitt with five 20-yard plays in the game. This is sixth. Quadri Olison into Virginia Tech territory. And right on cue at running back you, Quadri Olison breaks another big run nice blocking again by George Aston the the fullback opening up a nice big hole for the big back in Olison you know Pitt was averaging Andre 14 and a half yards per play before that last run <laughs> now we're at 15 and a half that's a run of 31 that's just sick they're gashing this young and beat up hokey front a couple of linebackers banged up Dylan Rivers Emmanuel Belmar the end out today. Rashard Ashby has been banged up. They'll run it again. Olison with plenty of space following Stefano Millen, the left tackle from Kent State, for a run of 21. Connor Dentino, the left guard, out in front as well. And if you're going to have this kind of success, you better have some offensive linemen that are in tune and playing together and the guys up front those five big offensive linemen for Pitt four seniors and one sophomore Jimmy Morrissey in the middle are doing some work today you asked Pat Narduzzi who's playing well on the line he oh. said everyone five man unit four seniors and a sophomore back of the ground to Hall a stutter step at first and the Hokies get penetration here well, they have stood up for a loss. Virginia Tech, they're over pursuing right now and afraid of it. I would send Ashton one way, stick it in the belly of Hall, and I think a bootleg out the backside, Kenny Pickett may run free with nobody around him. Look at that production. A little production today. Hall's averaging 28 yards a carry. And he just lost two. And that's you know right in line with what he did last week 19 carries for 229 and three touchdowns Pickett motions asked him from right to left they say Pickett is so good with those checks at the line here he will take it himself Kenny Pickett tap dance his way to stay in bounds and Pickett is ruled out of bounds before he hit the goal line question Way is, back did, he, 12. did he pick up the first down and the answer is yes but this is why I like the bootleg it's almost similar in a different manner everybody's down the field they're flowing with Darren Hall where it allowed Pickett 
right there the foot's out of bounds to pick up a first down running some athlete at 6 2 2 20 and you you get so concerned with Olison and Hall that you forget about the big quarterback that has some wheels of his own Pitt is now over 350 yards of offense most of them on the ground on first down Hall and he gets stuck Boy, there it is again We're right back to that same formation stick it in there and let him pull it and then you give him kind of a run pass option with the receive the single receiver out wide I think it's Aaron Matthews the junior biggest difference the coach has told us with Kenny Pickett this year really there were two one is how yeah. great he is with checks and sweeps in the run game the other he's learned to lead the whole football team and they love his demeanor whether he's throwing a touchdown or he's in a run for one or, or throws an incompletion you never really know and that's staying in the moment on the sweep this is French Maurice French hops in for his second score how about the dirty work again Aaron Matthews this time dirty work out on the edge is holding a nice block and that allowed French to get in the end zone the tail end of this play get a couple of nice blocks up front along with Olison throwing a block gets two of them but right about at the end of it you see French with a block excuse me uh, Matthews with a block allowing French to get into the end zone it's that dirty work again the Draymond Greens and the Dennis Rodman types let's give Aaron Matthews a, a special shout out he's our best blocking receiver that's what Love the coach it. has told us he throws the block to spring French who's got one touchdown for each of the F's in his last name 249 on the ground for Pitt a little scuffle it's broken out after the extra point Now the Steelers have already won in week 10. Your NFL Sunday kicks off tomorrow and countdown has you started at 10 a.m. Eastern. They preview the big one in Cincinnati. It's the Saints fresh off their win over the Rams at the Bengals. There's James Conner. He'll be glued into the Pats Titans game. Talking about the Saints Bengals game. And what they did the other night here, it looks as though Pitt, the Panthers, trying to match what the Steelers did in this very stadium on Thursday night. There is the former Pitt Panther, current Pittsburgh Steeler. James Conner was with the running backs before the game. Hey, we all we got, we all we need, fellas. Let's do our jobs today. Let's do it right, man. Let's put on, man. I know what it is. RBU on three. One, two, three. RBU. Running back university. Who are we to argue with no, this performance? Can't argue with that one. Peoples. Flag is thrown on the run back. He is stopped at the 21. This is going to be rough starting field position off the penalty for Virginia Tech. I just love it, though, the contributions that both backs have made. Illegal block in the back. Number four, return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. I, I just, you know, I'm one of the guys, I don't care who gets the credit. And sometimes, even as a star, you got to do the dirty work. Olison, he throws a heck of a block, picks off two. And then you get Matthews on the edge who allows French to get in the end zone. That, that's beautiful football. And that and will be praised in film study by Pat Narduzzi and this staff. Justin Fuente on the other sideline. His team scores on the last drive. Ryan Willis, a 29-yard toss to Eric Kuma. First down from the nine. Willis steps up, goes down. Willis sacked well, and it's Jason Pinnock off the edge. Here's a note Kevin if you step up to avoid a pass rusher you cannot step backwards because he's still coming and so once you step up you've got to keep pressing the pocket step up keep stepping up or get rid of the football but the minute you try to go back that's when the guy that you uh, you avoided the first time is going to get back into it. Willis snaps it for the end zone hits Turner. Boy, that was a nearly electric play. Turner was about a broken tackle away from running for a long time. He gets nine to set up a manageable third down. Uh, good point because 
You're down here. You're trying not to make the big or critical mistake yet. Give yourself enough time to allow a, a route to develop down the field. I've been impressed with Trey Turner here in the first half. Willis. This one is overthrown. Good coverage there by Pinnock, who had the sack to start the drive, and he didn't let Turner get an inch. Yeah, they like the size of Pinnock. They at six foot, 195 pounds to battle with some of these bigger receivers for Virginia Tech. So they told us, Randy Bates told us yesterday that he was going to have an opportunity to make some plays, and nothing makes a coach happier than when he calls your number and you respond. Air catch Arugio. made by Arujo Lopes. Great starting field position for Pitt. No timeouts, but a minute 38 to go. Coming up at the half here on ESPNU, Chris Cotter, Emmanuel Acho, and Jim Mora in studio. Some big Big Ten battles earlier today with the Buckeyes in Michigan State. Surprise, surprise, the tide are rolling. And we talk Bedlam in Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. I'll be surprised here if Kenny Pickett doesn't drop back and let one go deep he's got press coverage on the outside he's right at midfield this is when you do it we we'll play action to set it up there's the play action and here comes the shot from Pickett his receivers got a step oh he had it it would have been French's third it was right there Boy, you got to lay out, lay out, Maurice. Leave your feet, big guy, and reach and grab that one. But I think it's because of the pass rush, gains on the outside. He forces Pickett to rush it just a little bit, who had great inside position on the route. That's one you just got to leave your feet and lay out and hope for the best. Second down. Well, the Hokies have backed off quite a bit before this second down play. And Pitt will run it with Olison cutting it upfield. He gets seven. They get six. And Pitt will get to the line well, quickly before third down, although there is an injured Virginia Tech player. That's what a shot play will do, though. I mean, it'll free it up. And that's... Looks like Gaines, the pass rusher. One of the rare experienced yeah. players on this defense, the redshirt junior Haushan Gaines. And for Bud Foster, he's already down to his second and third string at some positions. He leads this team in sacks with four and a half coming in. Two and a half of those came against Duke in week five when he had a heck of a football game. Well, it's 24 7 pit as Gaines has helped off the field. We want to take a look at our mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate. It's 24 7. It could be more as the Hokies forced to fumble. Jermaine Waller knocked it out at the five of the run by Kenny Pickett. But he, I mean, he, he put his helmet right on the elbow of Kenny Pickett to pop that thing out. Virginia Tech recovered and went on to score their only touchdown of the ball game to, to really keep them in, in this thing. But to my point, you talk about Virginia Tech backing off after that shot play. That's what it does. And he was open. So if he hits it, you really don't see it the rest of the day. But just the, the thought of it happening again, it backed Bud Foster off. And then when you do that, it loosens the defense a little bit. Now you're going to get those running lanes and better blocking angles for the offensive line. Third and four as Gaines leaves the field. Pickett keeps it. And Pickett has the first down. How long have we been calling for that bootleg? And it finally shows up in a big situation on third down where they, the flow of the defense goes with Olison, And it just enough room for Kenny Pickett to show it, pull it, and pick up the first down. No timeout, so Pitt has to go under a minute here in the half. It's a rush of six for the Hokies. Pickett. Oh, he had French open again, and he overshot it to the sideline. And French has got some speed. They told us he was their big play threat with excellent speed. Boy, is he showing it off today. One of the leading rushers today, Pickett, in there as well with 42 yards in his own right. 
Hall already over 100, 100 yards, and then Olison closing in on it. There's been some performance on the ground for the Panthers. This is where you want to hit a hitch, and you got one up top where you can take a cheap six yards and get out of bounds. And a movement on the right side of the line. I'm going to back up the Panthers. Not exactly what Ball he wanted start. with Tipton. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty or down. Alex Bookster, the right tackle. Correction, that, that, second down. That makes it tougher. It's Bookster. Yeah, we, <laughs> Bookster, we saw it up here, big fella. You can't deny that one. But all you're looking for in that situation, is let's get half of it, get out of bounds, get it to a manageable situation on third down, convert, stop the clock. No timeouts left for Pitt. So they're going to have to use the sideline to help them out. Can you go over the middle of the field here? There's still enough time to, right? Oh, yeah, there's enough time to go over the middle of the field. You just want it. If you do it, you want an, a catch and run for a first down. Pick it. Airs it out again. One on one to the top of the screen. It's caught. It's Taysier Mack, and he's marked out at the one. What a throw by Kenny Pickett. And he hadn't shown this type of playmaking ability through the air, but sometimes you just get in a rhythm as a quarterback, and it's your day. And I'm not sure that's not a touchdown when they, they need to re -look, review this one and take a different look, take another look. That looks like a six points. I don't think he stepped out of bounds whatsoever. Maybe the right foot, the angle the we the saw. Field is a completed pass. The previous play is under review. That initial angle didn't look like he was anywhere near out of bounds. But what a dime thrown by Kenny Pickett. He is en route to a career best day, Kenny Pickett. He's got 162 already. Will he have 163? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe just a little bit. Actually, it's a good call by the official. You see the left side of his the toe area, just enough of it steps out of bounds. Where is the ball when he's out of bounds? My, my only other question. But I don't know that there's a definitive angle or look that tells you. And that's a good question. The pit sideline is reacting in totality like it's a touchdown. This year, there it is right there, about the half yard line. And I don't think the ball's the ball's touching the goal line. So I think that's it's the correct call. The call will stand. And Tayshir, of course, he wants it because it'll be his first touchdown reception on the year. He had three for Indiana last year. Will he have one for Pitts? Jerry Magalanis will give us the answer. After review, the ruling on the field stands. A completed catch. First down at the half-yard line. Why don't they confirm it anymore? Does that one look like one that would have been confirmed? Let's go with the old standard. It stands. The, the difference in lingo for folks who don't know being confirmed means the call was definitely right. Stands means there's not conclusive evidence to overturn. Either way, it is first down from inside the one. The back is Olison. Watch George Ashton here. Right there. Watch this block. Who needs a block when you get the football? Big George is in. I'm waiting on the big fella to throw a block. And they turn around and they give it to him. How about all that hard, dirty work that I do? And I finally get rewarded with the football. Second touchdown run for Aston, the redshirt senior from Stevens City, Virginia. And he'll stay in there as part of the extra point protection team. What a drive for Pitt. 52 yards in 63 seconds to potentially end the first half. Boy, he is feeling it right now. Second touchdown of the year. I do all the hard, dirty work. And I finally get rewarded. Right here. Gonna go over the top too a little bit. Love it. Love it. A he just wanted back. to leave his feet. Yeah, throwback type player. 
That'll take your hat off to the big guy at 3-5. Sean Watson told us he is one of the best in college football at what he does. And they think he has a real chance to play on Sundays. He's a fullback. You don't yeah. hear that much about a fullback nowadays. But with that, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. We know how well he blocks. And in a pinch, you know, he can carry it as he did there on a the goal line situation. So I, I definitely think he's going to have an opportunity to, to make it into camp for someone. Throwback type player, George Aston. That is what they want here at Pitt. That is what they recruit for. Kids who love football. Well, the Virginia Tech offensive yeah, lineman is going to run this thing back. Big TJ Jackson, number 71. Well, the ACC's just been playing crazy this year. And it's time to take a ride, Andre Ware, on the ACC <laughs> Wheel of Destiny. Good thing we have football schools like Syracuse in the ACC to hold up the conference at Boston College, who's hosting game day. When the nation's longest bowl streaks are in jeopardy, Virginia Tech, the nation's longest recognized bowl streak at Florida State. Pitt is alone atop the coastal at the end of all of this. The wheel has spun in favor of Pat Narduzzi's team. They are four and one in conference play. They could be five and one with a win today. And they get the ball, remember, to start the second half after deferring to start the game. Yeah, just a tough hill to climb, and then Pitt going to get the football first to start the second half. So this is if they win. Yep. Uh, these are the FPI odds. I know. I know FPI is not on the field. I, I, I know that. But Pitt <laughs> is five and one in the conference if they win this game. They're at Wake Forest in Miami the next two weeks. Willis delivers it short. It is the tight end Keen. Hokies have three timeouts, and they will use one here. They're yeah, just trying to get in a position to maybe launch one deep or timeout. maybe get Virginia Tech. into a situation where you can at least come away with a field goal. Timeout. Timeout. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we still have a whole half left, but as we said, the pit remaining schedule, yeah. uh, it's not easy. You have to go on the road against a Wake Forest team that won hot. Thursday night they at are NC hot. State. And then Miami. I don't think FBI quite knows what to do with Miami. Uh, other analytic systems, FBI, S&P Plus, anywhere you look, they don't really know what to do with Miami because the Kings are so good defensively, but they've been an absolute mess offensively of late. Yeah. So 16%, that seems a little low. It's they, still not an easy end. You talk about a fall off. Well, we had oh Miami early in the season, and I thought, oh, my goodness, they're going to compete for the ACC and the way they looked. and. The bottom just fell out of that thing. But the one thing of all of this that I think gets lost is Pitt holds on wins today. They're bowl eligible. I mean, they picked up, they will have picked up their sixth win by day's end if they're able to hold on here against Virginia Tech. Willis, quick hitter. This is Grimsley. He's got the first down. And there is a flag down with seven seconds remaining. Back near the line of scrimmage. Holding offense, number 61. Ten yard penalty, third down. Third down. Right, now it's just Please Hail Mary eight time. Seconds on the game clock. Eight seconds. And he could still run another play with eight seconds. That's big Kyle Chung, his dad. Eugene was a heck of a player. All American at Virginia Tech and a first round draft pick. And now. A Coach with the Philadelphia Eagles. Some good bloodlines there, and he's a good player in his own right. So the Hokies can get a chunk of those yards back and then set up for the Hail Mary. Have the timeouts. It'll be a draw play to Peoples. Stephen Peoples across midfield. Got to get down at some point here. One second on the clock, oh, and now it's run a, out. Could have called another timeout there after the run, and now. That would have given you the opportunity to throw the Hail Mary. So maybe he got the, the timeout the call, he being field. Justin Fuente. The first down was gained. The play's under review for the clock. So the first down gain, that stops the clock right there. And I actually think there's going to be about two seconds left here in the first half. Well, it has been a review city. He's reset the game clock to two seconds. Yeah, two, about two seconds, seconds. On the game clock. So that allows Virginia Tech. One more, more, one more opportunity 
to throw a deep shot. Their second time out of the half. That was 30 seconds. Almost time too out. good of a run by Peoples. He almost ran out the whole clock himself. And it puts you right within Hail Mary Rays. This would be about a 59 60 yard field goal. I saw one of those last Sunday. Contributed to a win. I couldn't believe it when I saw it being kicked. 62 yards in the Texans Broncos game. A miss gives the Texans because of where the ball was placed the ball past midfield two plays later they're kicking a field goal guess what the difference in the game was two points that field goal well you were in Denver where the altitude could not is believe high. that was caught I mean that they even took the chance to kick the field goal here at Heinz Field nobody's attempting from 59 because nobody's made one from longer than 55 and that's the pit kicker Alex Kessman so it's Hail Mary time for Willis Two seconds and a half. Hokies looking for a minor miracle to head into the locker room. Pitt will rush three, and Willis is not even going to get it off. In the grasp and ruled down. Hendricks. Hendricks is in there again. What a dominant first half for the Pittsburgh Panthers. At home in the Steel City, and an absolute shellacking of the Hokies for 30 minutes. Thirty one seven Pitt looking to put its foot down and keep the lead in the coastal. Half time inside our college football studios. Chris Cotter, Jim Moore and Emmanuel Acho are here with you. How many more tests remain for Alabama? One today, Mississippi State coming into Tuscaloosa, though. So you don't have to hear the cowbells and everything in Stark Vegas. And Tua says, well, I'm feeling comfortable here. I'll just find Irv Smith right down to the one. Didn't have the zip on it. It usually does. But Tua throws an incredible seven ball, that corner touch. And how about a stable of backs that are fresh? Because uh, Saban's been rotating them all. First, Damian Harris with the score. Then Josh Jacob. Nice move. Really nice cut there. Alabama defense playing extremely well today. It's 21 to nothing right now. Bama on top. Bedlam has been just that. Boomer Schooner coming out. This is trouble, but look at the flag. That that young man keeps the flag flying. Resiliency by the Sooners on all fronts and all phases. Grass is one thing. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Once he got Time to the to concrete, go. he said, <laughs> "My job is done." Comes up smiling though. Love it. Got to give the young man credit. Taylor Cornelius was just tearing apart this Sooner secondary. First finds Tyron Johnson here, and then he hooks up with Tylen Wallace. Artistic catch right there. Here's Wallace's touchdown. Has time, steps up. Highland Wallace has been wrecking Big 12 defenses all season long. Doing it today, 21-17, folks on top. But we'll talk about a stable of backs. Let me introduce you to Kennedy Brooks if you hadn't heard the name. One goes down and the next one steps up. Look at the downfield block there. CD. Ooh, flex on him, CD. Great block. 27-21. <laughs> Half been over yet, so that score could change on ABC. Michigan and Rutgers, this one promised to be lower scoring, at least for the team in red. Karan Higdon gets Michigan on the board early, but what do you do if you're Rutgers? And the last time Michigan came into Piscataway, they won 78 to nothing. You got to hit them with long plays. You got to control the football. You got to make big plays when they present themselves. That's Isaiah Pacheco. He's weaving his way. Everybody following him, just enough to get into the end zone. 80 yards. So 7-7. Seven, seven. But then just too much ball control, long, you know, tough fighting drives Higdon again. Too much talent, too much strength, Carter. This Michigan team is on a mission. And then a wide open Nico Collins. What happens here? We had a little uh, miscommunication on the back end there, and uh, Shea Patterson finds it. He, tell you what, good teams, they take advantage of mistakes that are made by their opponents. Exactly that right. 21-7, beautiful day in Boulder. Washington State got to be careful taking on CU Trayvon McMillan goes 64 yards here gets him inside the five then he would finish up the drive on the next play Buffaloes go up seven to nothing over Mike Leach's squad flying the flag for the Pac-12 now can't afford to slip up on the road Ach, one thing you know Mike Leach is going to have he's going to have running backs that catch the ball out of the backfield like even Max back in his days at Tech when I was going up against him he had a stable of running backs that could catch the ball and whoop right there make him they spread the field so well so well coach or you with the score 10-7 right now on ESPN Buffs trailing Wazoo Kentucky Tennessee is an underrated rivalry in the SEC Jared Garantano finds Marcus Callaway 
Look at that final play of the first half. 17 to nothing. Kentucky, I, I believe, has a little hangover. A little hangover right now. Yep. Baylor, Ohio State, Iowa State rather. Brock Purdy. That's a nice catch by Deshante Jones. Dancing on the back line. An Iowa State highlight without Hakeem Butler. Yeah, well, How about that? Hey, there's Hakeem Butler. You see him? Congratulate <laughs> me. Baylor right here struggling offensively. Brewer can't hit his receiver, ends a drive, and then Iowa State on the other end. Purdy's just going to keep it himself. Got a wide open lane. Love the play. Get the edge, give him the run pass option. He takes the run into the end zone. 14 to nothing. Iowa State on top over Baylor. Maurice French with the score here. How good is Pitt? Wow. 31 to 7 right now at the half. Halftime here in studio. Chris Cotter, Emmanuel Acho, Jim Mora. We've got a lot of highlights to get to. This is one yeah. of those days where, you know, some teams don't have big matchups, but they got slip ups. They got areas where they could just go down, and then all of a sudden the whole season is down the tubes. Ohio State could be one of those teams taking on Michigan State. This one was sloppy here early, but Dwayne Haskins gets it to Paris Campbell. Buckeyes up 7 0, and Michigan State coach was in this thing, and then bad turnovers. Look at this one in their own end zone. You know what? You're trying to pull an upset. You can't have a play like that. You don't call that play oh. coming out your own end zone either. No, you, you know what? You got to go direct. You got to go straight ahead. So Draymond Jones oh. scores on that one. Here's another one deep in their own territory. Ohio State recovers. That led to a field goal. It's close, and now all of a sudden it isn't. Mike Weber punches it in 26 6. Too bad for Michigan State because they were really playing great defense early, and their offense kind of let them down with those miscues. South Carolina and Florida. This was one of the games of the week. Down in the swamp. Felipe Franks here. The screen pass to Kadarius Tony. Mm. That's a nice move. South Carolina got ahead of him early, but Florida so resilient. I love that about what Dan Mullins is building down there. Yeah, you're right. You're trailing. Look at this. Trailing by 10 here yep. in the fourth quarter. Michael P. Ryan. That's a great that run. That is a great run. Picking his way through the defense. Florida still trailing, but they would just go on these drives here in the second half. Fourth and goal, huge play. Franks keeps it and scores. Florida comes back to beat South Carolina 35 31 yeah. home. West Virginia hosting TCU. West Virginia still alive in the Big 12, and Will Greer here. West Virginia also a slow start, Ott, before turnovers helped them get going off. Cotter, Cotter, not only are they alive, they control their own fate still. Will Greer is finally back rolling. Good call, Trayvon Wesco for the score. Here he finds Gary Jennings Jr. He's just seeing the field, Coach. Very much. The patience in the pocket, seeing the field, looking guys off, finding the right guy to throw to. David Sills, why not? Touchdown easy. The 47 to 10, West Virginia, no issues. UCF hosting Navy. Mackenzie Milton here is going to find Hedrick Snelson. This is not once but twice these two hook up. UCF uses the entirety of the field. Coach spread you out, user speed. Oh, and they have some speed, don't they, Hodge? And Milton can run it if he needs to. And if he needs to find Snelson again, he'll do that. Navy kind of hung in there. Just they didn't have any answer for this team when uh, the Knights got the football. No, I mean, Navy is obviously resilient and tough. It's not a great season, but too much talent for UCF. Ole Miss, Texas A&M, there's Vaughn Miller. He can rush it. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, such about a it. career at Texas A&M. Likes watching this, though, but not that fumble. Oh, goodness. Looked like you might have Kellen Mond getting it into the end zone instead it goes in the other end zone. You just can't do that. Oh, and Ole Miss makes him pay. Red Zedrick zone Woods. turnovers, kill. Get high, coach. 96 yards for Zedrick Woods. That flag was against Texas A&M, so it counts. Third quarter still. Mond responded, though. You got to love this, coach, with the response to Courtney Davis. That shows a guy that's maturing and believing himself. Coming back from a bad play, leading to a touchdown. Great throw. Ravian Williams had a huge game. He has massive games down there. His opponents are going to say, like, how many years is this guy playing for AM? Isn't it just about time? 38 24, Aggies with the win at home. Wisconsin and Penn State before the year began. This was like the game of the century in the Big Ten. It hasn't panned out that way, but Jonathan Taylor needs it. He goes 71 yards. Jonathan Taylor getting back on track. Went for over a buck 80 in this game. Way to run, young man. Trace McSorley brings Penn State back, though, finding DeAndre Tompkins here tying the game at seven. Trace is a tremendous competitor, as we all know. And, uh, you know, his team has struggled a little bit this year, but he is certainly a great leader. Miles Sanders with the Fosbury flop over the top. They missed the extra point. It wouldn't matter in the end. 22-10 Penn State with the W. 
Missouri hosting Vandy. Kyle Shermer finds Collegiate Lipscomb. Great catch. Great catch. Put it where no one else could, could catch it. And his guy did catch it. So Shermer had a good game, but so did Drew Locke. Doing it with his arm, doing it with his leg. Here just a, he reads the defense perfectly past the Daniel Park. Drew Locke hasn't had a phenomenal year when you look at what he did last year, but still finding a way to get Missouri wins and bowl eligible. I mentioned he did it with his legs, too. When all the attention goes to those backs, Crockett and Roundtree just keeps it and scores. Missouri with the lead. Vandy down five and a chance in this one. Shermer is going to have one final shot, 25 yards with the clock ticking down. Shermer throws toward the end zone. Batted down. Nice play by Mizzou. They're bowl eligible. Six Big win. Bandy's a tough. They, they are coach. You know, they, they keep it tight every week. Nebraska and Illinois defense. Well, close your eyes, Och. It was optional in this game. Adrian Martinez here finds Stanley Morgan Jr. wide open. 21 to 14 in the first quarter. Then divide a Zigbo. Does his thing. I'm not mad at those I, I'm tell, I think the future is very bright for Nebraska. I think Scott Frost is right choice. I know they had a lot of struggles early, but they are on track to be a really good team really fast. Jack Stoll hauling this one in final seconds of the first half. Nebraska rolls 54 to 35. Download the ESPN app. So you got ESPN Plus right there. All the games in the palm of your hand. This is the All-State Saturday kickoff. What a first half for the Pitt Panthers. Justin Fuente, the Hokies are in search of answers. 425 total yards for Pitt in the first half as the Panthers look to take a commanding lead over Virginia Tech and a full game lead over Virginia in the ACC Coastal. Kevin Brown, Andre Ware, look, the school record for yardage <laughs> is within reach yeah. right now for Pitt. Again, that number is 425, uh, the total yardage in the first half for Pitt. Big plays after big plays after big plays. They got it started with defense, and then the big plays, as you mentioned, took over, and it came from all types of different angles where the running backs got involved with it, and then the receivers got involved. Quarterbacks started to play well. It was outstanding. On the ground, Darren Hall was the first one of those to break a big one. He had a run of more than 50. Two yards of 50-plus and a half for Hall. Long touchdown for French. Taysier Mack with a 40-plus yard catch down to the one. Look, we're telling you about these big plays. Why don't we just show you? Yeah, I mean, it, it got started. Darren Hall broke off a big run right up the middle of the formation. Soft spot in the Virginia Tech defense. And we got a chance to see his speed early and often. But don't forget about his buddy, Mr. Olison. He gets going. Big bat, physical, with speed. When you turn it over, when you think you're going to stop the run, what does that do? It opens up the passing lanes on the outside. Maurice French with his speed and playmaking ability on the outside. They capitalize. Taysheer Mack with a big catch down the sideline all the way to the one-yard line. This pit offense was operating on all cylinders in the first half. First play of the half here is a handoff to Quadri Olison. Tyree Rogers on the stop for Virginia Tech. Oh, it's a hokey defense that is beleaguered, undermanned, and they lost another player, Haushan Gaines, out with a knee injury. That's the word from the Virginia Tech Sports Information Department. So Gaines, their leading sack man with four and a half on the year, is done for the day. Needs more Vinnie Mahota, more Taiwan Garbutt up front. As Bud Foster's depleted defense tries to find an answer. On the pitch, penetration from Hollyfield, and that sets up the tackle for a loss. Off the edge, the play made by Garbutt for a loss of a couple. Yeah, they really like Garbutt, a redshirt freshman, showing you why. Some nice speed off the edge, and he's going to really have to step up and fill the shoes of Gaines for the remainder of this ball game. You ready for the misleading stat of the day? What do you, what do you got? That's Virginia Tech's seventh tackle for loss. Wow. So Pitt's got 424 in total. <laughs> 12 and a half yards per play for Pitt. That is, uh, that is operating. You give up seven tackles for a loss, yet you're still, your average is still way up there. Pitt has not punted today. Pick it, try to get 11, and he is well short. So we will see the Pitt Panther punter, Kirk Christodoulou, oh. for the first time. Challenged in that locker room, I guarantee you, Justin Fuente 
challenged his defense the offensive side of it and his football team to hey let's get this thing going in all three phases and compete for 30 minutes let's just see what happens if we go out and play our best football for 30 minutes don't try to get it all back on one play just hey, handle every series Here's to Dulu to kick it away to Damon Hazelton. Nice punt. Returnable at his 18. And Hazelton is planted, driven backwards. Guess who? Where's the forward progress? The question is that Olison down that there? That is Olison covering punts and a heck of a tackle by the big fella getting down the field and just stoning the punt returner. Oh, number 30 going to come here right into your screen. Nice form tackle. Hey, loses his grip, but it still has some jersey. And then you got George Aston showing up as well to help out. How awesome is that? That's awesome. That is awesome. Starting running back, starting fullback. And on the play, they both scored touchdowns. So Virginia Tech will take it after the nice punt and run it with Stephen Peoples for five yards. Ryan Willis got the hookies across midfield quite a bit in the first half. Touchdown pass to Eric Kuma for the only Virginia Tech score. What do you think of his play? I like the numbers. I like the composure he showed in the first half, 12-19. Respectable numbers at 133, and then, of course, the touchdown pass to Kuma. But he's going to need a lot more than that and at a rapid pace to get him right back, get him back into this game. Willis keeps it off the edge with space to operate and Willis does not slide down wow. takes a bit of a lick but gets Virginia Tech to the 43 for a gain of 18 a page out of Kenny Pickett's playbook where they show it and they're going to run it a designed quarterback run it's the defensive end of that side to bite down inside just enough to pick up a nice big game the bar Hamlin with a stop first out Hokies and a handoff to Jalen Holston for five more. Yeah, I guarantee you that the, that paint in the locker room is still peeling. Those people's taking a, a break to the sideline, and it's like the training staff may take a look at him. But I think the paint's still peeling in the locker room after that halftime speech by Justin Whitney because they they have come out with a sense of urgency, not on, only on on defense but on offense as well. Well, is chased down by Weaver. On the run and too tall for Kuma. He kept waiting on Trey Turner to quit dancing with the corner to that side, Jason Pinnock. And he just ran out of time and had to find somewhere to go with the football. And he chose Kuma to go to, but he really wanted Trey Turner. Some men are just born to dance, Andre. <laughs> Virginia Tech nine third down tries in the first half hit three. This has not been a good third down defense on the year. Kuma right near the sticks. Well, and I thought he had the first down and he bubbled back. And this may be decision time. I think we got to go for it here if you're Justin Fuente. He was in this situation in the first half on a fourth and short elected to run quarterback sneak to pick it up and did so. Yeah, you're across midfield. You got to roll the dice. Here comes Wheatley. And Willis will fake the sweep and take it himself for yeah. two yards at a first down. No hesitation. Get downhill in a hurry. And it's going to give him the first down uh, or the yard is necessary to pick it up. Ryan Willis. Has started since Josh Jackson went out in the Old Dominion game, third game of the year. So he's been the starter the majority of the year. He spent his first two years at Kansas. 12 touchdowns, 17 interceptions for a beleaguered Jayhawk program. Has come here, played well. Willis steps up, got rid of it just in time. And it's a little bit too high for Hezekiah Grimsley. Yeah, and he was being pressured by Rashad Weaver, the other outstanding defensive end opposite Dwayne Hendricks who's got a couple of sacks early Hendricks pushing the pocket Weaver disengages and forces that high throw from Ryan Willis well he is a good looking athlete isn't he 
Pat Narduzzi told us he could be the head football coach of Pitt someday, too. That's how highly he thinks of him. On the ground with Holston. Third and long coming up. Amir Watts in on the stop for Pitt. Yeah, you throw the incompletion on first down, and then now coming back on second, you want something positive, so you go right back to the running game. And this is who we thought we would see early in the ball game is Jalen Holston, the sophomore out of Stockbridge, Georgia. No McLeese today, no Peoples for the time being, still on the sideline for Virginia Tech. Yeah, deep zone, playing deep zone here. He'll just run to the stick and turn around. Willis will flip it quickly to Hazleton through traffic, and he's about a yard and a half short. Another fourth down coming up for Virginia Tech. See, no reason why not to go for it and maybe go back to the well again with Ryan Willis. Hazleton leaves the field, their leading receiver for this fourth down play. Once again, you have Wheatley wide to the right. The other running back will come in motion. And now Willis checks as Pitt does it bite. Blake locked down to six. I gotta get a snap. Here we go again. Wheatley in motion. Willis keeps it. Same play as the previous fourth down. And this one good for three yards at a first. Why not until you stop it? It's fourth and short. Just keep running the same play. They move the chains once again. Where is the big receiver, Eric Kuma? Down here in press coverage at the bottom. Willis is thinking what you're thinking. And he gets another flag once again with Dane Jackson in coverage against Kuma. And Jackson hopping mad. Yeah, it's, that's a tub. He's 225 pounds at 6'2. You're going to press him. I'm going to go there. Uh, it, that is that is a tough matchup for the redshirt junior Dane Jackson at just six foot matched against that a, a guy with that height and size it's tough and he's got excellent excellent hands you crawl up there again go right back again at him well I don't know that they're going to on this play because Quincy Patterson's back at a quarterback a true freshman who ran it last time and he will do so again, Patterson. Flip over to offensive lineman for a gain of two. Fifteen schools, one network. A new place for the conference to call a home. The ACC network is coming August 2019. Okay. Ryan Willis has proven in this drive that he can run the football, right? Right. What's the switch for? Patterson. Nothing. I, I have. You got a guy 100% stand, with standing you. on the no sideline, ice cold. Patterson hadn't been warming up. He hadn't been trotting up and down the sideline. What is the reasoning for the switch? Here's the other thing. Pitt knows what's coming. Exactly. There's not a threat right now that Patterson's going to throw. They like Patterson, but he hasn't thrown the ball all year. So you know he's going to run it. He plunges into the pile for nothing, and now Willis comes back in for a third and eight. 13th play now, of the drive. Now all the pressure, you blew first and second down, and you put all the pressure on the back of Ryan Willis, who had nothing to do with it the previous two downs. Now asking him to deliver. Got to do your job, though. Willis. And they'll run it again. Ryan Willis for the first down. Lowers his shoulder. Upended at the five. Willis not shy of contact. It was Bryson Garner you know, with a hit there. You know what that does? It fires up your offensive line. When they see that, nice block as well by Dalton Keene, the tight end. But you take a shot like that and pop right back up. Look at him. A couple of guys patting him on the helmet, congratulating him. And he's out of the game again. Love it. Here's Patterson. First and goal at the five. Patterson gives it to Wheatley on the sweep. Wheatley gets nothing. Well, here, here's the reason why. If you're you're questioning why we're questioning the decision to put Quincy Patterson in the game, he hadn't warmed up. He's been standing around, so you know that there's going to be either a quarterback run or some type of run from Virginia Tech. He's not throwing the ball. Again, Willis has played so well on this drive, 
Patterson. Maybe he will throw it here. Flip it to the end zone, and he missed a wide open receiver. Hazelton was in the area. He also had James Mitchell right. running free near the back line. I just think coaches sometimes outsmart themselves. When you have something going, and it's taken a while, it's obvious on the scoreboard that it has taken a while for Virginia Tech to get their motor running on offense. And you finally get the quarterback, Willis, going. He looks sharp, running and throwing. And you get down here and start experimenting with something because you worked on it in practice. Well, guess what? Sometimes that goes out the window. And you just stay with what's working. Once again, Willis trying to be the hero on third down. Willis keeps it. Had a defender right there. Three more join the way. And Willis is stuffed. Sean Idolu, the senior, in on the play. And it's fourth and goal in decision time for Justin Puente. Almost felt like he would outrun the defensive player that was pursuing. And he slowed down to try to cut back inside agree with it you get down here you need points you need big points to get back in this game but blowing two downs because you have a package in that you worked on in practice is a, a head scratcher 17th play of the drive for the Hokies fourth and goal at the five Willis to the end zone it is caught touchdown Eric Kuma that is been the uh, the go to guy for him today more so than Hazelton because Hazelton's drawn all the attention it has allowed Eric Kuma to get less attention and he is a great route runner flattening that thing off How about that the hands sure hands on a big receiver of Kuma's physical ability that's nice now Virginia Tech will go for two try to make this a two score game Willis for Kuma little push and Kuma comes down with it well, the he, big man's having a field there you hear me always say it it's not speeding unless you get pulled over <laughs> no flag on the field nice so, fade route I'm gonna throw it up and let his big guy make a play right in the middle of the field there's the touchdown to go for two go right back to the well again to Eric Kuma who delivers for Virginia Tech right back in this thing you're watching the ACC on ESPN longest drive of the year for the Hokies time wise 17 plays 7 minutes 38 seconds they get the two point conversion this is a two score game 31 to 15 a 17 play drive that Virginia Tech needed to have and Ryan Willis delivered on fourth down hitting Eric Kuma before a two point pass to Kuma Hokies on defense when we return the Allstate Saturday kickoff is brought to you by McDonald's Seventeen play drive ins and a touchdown for Virginia Tech, which is back on defense. Defense usually is the signature for the bewhiskered Bud Foster and the Virginia Tech Hokies, but not this year. 425 in the first half for Pitt coming on the heels of Georgia Tech at Old Dominion, Andre, with historic performances against Ricky Walker and this Hokies defense. Yeah, and he got sick of it and had a team only meeting, called him in and he was sick of having records set on him. That's not what he came to Virginia Tech for. And that's not the reputation of the Hokies. It was before the game at BC last week. Darren Paul with a first down run for Pitt. You wonder if Ricky Walker had anything to say in the locker room after that first half performance. So the Georgia Tech number a couple of weeks ago, Georgia Tech won a game with one pass attempt. It was incomplete. They ran for 465 obviously that's their style yeah. but Ricky Walker's team has faced another power running group today and so far struggled mightily nickname bell cow on that defensive front because he does so much he's a leader the only senior starter on Bud Foster's defense Pittsburgh kid mom and dad are from here he's got a Pirates P logo tattooed on his arm looking for a comeback in his city Hall dances free. Oh Darren Hall 
has done it again. Breakaway speed for Hall. Hail to Hall. Touchdown pit, 73 yards. What a tandem with Olison and Hall. Another one he had yet to get in the end zone and finally got there and looked the, one of the first guys to meet him, Quadri Olison. Big, big hole along the right side and a break back and then it's to the house. Connor Dentino with a nice kick out block up front and that freed him up. And it was just a matter of can I get there in time. You mentioned in the first half, Virginia Tech's over-pursuit on defense with a young team. Was that an example there? Yes, you over-pursuing, and then you've got a back that can not only cut it back, but he's got speed to hit it with once it's there. And it doesn't have to stay open very long. Darren Hall is that type of back, and he's showing it tonight in Pittsburgh. College football playoff lives on ESPN. Pitt a win away from bowl eligibility controls its fate in the ACC Coastal, and the Panthers are running all over Virginia Tech. Easily could have taken their hands off the steering wheel. Bryce Watts inside his own one. Watts is swallowed up wow. inside the five. And to my point, special teams feeding off the energy of the offense, but the said Pitt could have easily taken their hands off the steering wheel when Virginia Tech goes down not only puts one in the end zone, but then converts on a two-point play. What do they do? They come back, the offense scores, and it feeds the energy right into your special teams. And, oh, yeah, Alex Kessman. He's feeling it too. And that, by the way, Stephen Peoples. Bryce Watts not in the game, my mistake. Peoples on the run back for Virginia Tech. Watts out with an arm injury. So the Hokies in their own five will run it ahead. A gain of four for Jalen Holston. But you want to go down if you were pit in that situation. You just gave up points. You got to match them and take the fight right back out of Virginia Tech or a little bit of the sails out of there, out of the air. And I'll, I'll tell you what, they did it, punched it in. A big run by Hall, and see what the defense has here. Well, it's in the face of pressure. Got rid of it to Keene, and Keene drives forward for the first down. Uh, if you're a Virginia Tech, throw it over your back and put a drive together again. Need points, you got to continue to score as it gets later and later into this game. Loki's team that's got two home games left after this one. Miami, Virginia. Right now they're scheduled to play 11. They had a game canceled with East Carolina. And if the Hokies can't pick up a win here, they would be one loss away from being disqualified for a bowl. They need to get to six wins, and Elias Reynolds blew up that play to make it just a little bit harder. That quarterback draw, and Reynolds did not, he was not fooled whatsoever. Now the Canes coming to Blacksburg next week. Then the Commonwealth Cup. Hokies have won 14 in a row against Virginia. Two long streaks for this program. The Bulls streak at 25 years. The Virginia streak at 14 years. Has FBI watched Miami lately? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Going to Blacksburg, you're only going to give them a 42% chance to win that game? Well, these are the recognized Bulls streaks. Florida State has the longest, but some NCAA penalties from about a decade ago have made their bull streak unofficial with some wins vacated so officially the Hokies have the longest in the nation and they are facing an uphill climb Willis third and long caught by Keen he appears to be short by a yard or so the first down well this is super decision time fourth down you're on your own 25 and the way Pitt's running the ball, though. Yeah, I almost feel like you have to do this, and I agree with it, because you need points, you need the football. Look, he said three fourth downs on the last drive, and Willis did a great job 
He caught a high snap from Hoyt and still managed to get forward for the first down. Let me tell you something. This kid is playing his guts out tonight. Trying to keep his team in it. This is some athletic move right here. Not expecting it that high, but he handles it. Then presence in mind to cut off the block of Stephen Peoples. If he just goes right ahead, he's going to be tackled for a loss. But nice athletic move to pick up the first down and keep this drive alive. Virginia Tech has had trouble with his snap issues all year, and that was a low snap. Willis flips it out. And the pass caught. Coming back to make the catch, Savoy into pit territory in a big play of 22. That's trusting that your receiver is going to know where he's supposed to be on the field. Threw it in an area, in a hole, and then there Savoy pops up and catches a nice, nice pass to pick up the first down. Waiting moments of the third. Willis. No. Not quite. I'm not sure why he didn't flip the ball to Grimsley. Hezekiah Grimsley's coming around. He will be in the screen. And not sure why. There's Flo. Everybody's there. He can't see what's going on behind him. He should have flipped that one. He's saying, no, it wasn't there, but I think it actually was. It's a loss of eight, whatever it was. And it will end the third quarter. Discombobulation for the Hokies to end the third. Celebration for the Panthers. A little time to talk it over. Get set for the fourth quarter and the final run here. Senior day for Darren Hall. Senior day for Quadri Olison. Their last home game. Their last show at Heinz Field. What a show it's been. Special day for Darren Hall on senior night. Run for nearly 200 yards on seven carries. And Pitt nearly has an interception to start the fourth, but there is a flag at the end of the play, well behind the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 17. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So the penalty on Pitt, you see the numbers on Hall. 16 yards a carry the last two weeks, and here Pitt gives up 15. Elias Reynolds in zone coverage and there's a the late shot by Rashad Weaver but it was Reynolds that actually got a hand on that ball. Pat Narduzzi being a defensive minded head coach <laughs> think he's going to like that penalty not at all. On the ground with Peoples this is still a three score game Virginia Tech with a 17 play touchdown drive last time. You just have to score and score quickly and then you got to get a stop and you got to get stops. Absolutely right. Good luck with that. Pitt has run it for 345 yards, 517 the total yardage. And off here goes to Sean Savoy, and Savoy is stuffed to the line of scrimmage. Will Campbell, the redshirt sophomore, in there on that stop. He's played some good football as of late. Hamlin, Briggs, and Campbell on the back end. Those safeties along with Stocker. We got a lot of depth and some pretty good players on the back end for Pitt. Four down territory again here for Virginia Tech. 15 third down attempt of the game, and this one caught for a first down the move by Trey Turner. The first down machine, Turner. He is going to have some career. At Virginia Tech, true freshman, great size, kind of understands the game. There's how to read zone coverage as well as man to man. Good ball skills. I like it. Justin Fuentes, eyes lit up, talking about Turner with us yesterday. Said he is ready to have a bigger role. He catches today. Now a screen set up. Peoples bounced off one of his offensive linemen. It's seven yards on first and ten. Hokies have moved the ball fairly well today. They've been across midfield, it seems, more often than not. Yeah. Had some drive stall, though, and missed a field goal in the first half. He had a 17-play drive. This is the 13th of this drive. We need the end zone here. If you were winning, these would be 
just perfect drives, but time is not on the Hokies' side. Willis to the sideline and caught by Hazelton. Hazelton breaks free of a tackle and scores. And they delivered with a touchdown here. Hazelton with a great spin move to come out of the tackle. That's his eighth touchdown. And now nine games. But this is the connection we talked about at the top. Hazelton's been quiet all night, splits the defenders, and you don't wrap up a big physical receiver like that. He's going to find his way to the end zone. Phil Campbell and Jason Pennock. And Hazelton sandwiched between, and he bounced away. 95 yard touchdown drive. Remember, it started at the five after an issue on the kickoff by Peoples. Hazel to the ACC leader in touchdown catches. Makes this a two score game once more. <laughs> Welcome back to the All State Saturday kickoff. Virginia Tech gets into the end zone on a 24 yard catch and spin and bump off and run by Damon Hazelton to score game Hokies and Pitt Panthers as much as Pitt has dominated on the ground Virginia Tech still a couple of touchdowns couple of two pointers away and the Hokies will kick deep Maurice French has a touchdown in the game on a long catch has run back two kicks for touchdowns this year and he's out of bounds here near the 35. Two flags come in for the hit late. And that late hit's going to be on the kicker, Alex Kessman, for a late hit out of bounds. Excuse me, Jordan Stout. I think he's actually trying to absorb the hit more so than hit it. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Kicking team number 25. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, it's purely an accident. There is no number 25 on the Virginia Tech roster. Uh, Diablo is 25 today for Frank Beamer, but look like 92 there. College football playoff rankings this week. They're brought to you by PlayStation 4. Bedlam is living up to the name. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. That is a one-point game. Okay, how, how do you have LSU ranked seven? The spanking they got last week at home. Um, who do you expect to not get spanked by Alabama? Seriously, I, I think you almost throw that game out the window. But but there is got to be some kind of how you lose, uh, not and not just to Alabama. But well, they drop four spots. Yeah. You put Washington State ahead of them. Yes. Washington and, and State. And I did today. I had Washington State conference. all the way up to to number six. Well, well okay. So non-conference schedules here and, and key wins. LSU certainly has some better wins than Washington State. That's got to mean something, right? No. That's how you're playing right now. On the toss, Olison. And then you got to go back and look at how are all those teams you played in the non-conference, how are they doing based on, you know, their strength of schedule and how it all sets up. Here. That is, it's amazing to me. You get drummed 29 to nothing and you only drop four spots and at home maybe if it was in Tuscaloosa I could understand dropping just four spots but that's at home in Baton Rouge well they beat Georgia they got a nice one on the road at Auburn they beat yeah. Miami which didn't look quite as good now but they dropped Miami in week one yeah that doesn't look worth, worth anything right about now both of these teams still have Miami on the schedule and right now for Pitt, you're talking about who's playing well right now. Just go ahead and put Pitt in the top four as Olison runs it for four to first down. Well, you can just by the running game alone, you could uh, you could make a case for Pitt as the best, one of the better running teams in the country. This is a, a bit of a misleading number we're showing you here because Pitt has a 73-yard touchdown run by Hall. Virginia Tech has spent the whole half. Uh, pit side of midfield the Panthers did their damage from their own 27. Olison over 100 yards along with Hall second time in their careers they've got over 100 the same game. Pick it. Well that's nice. Nice job of biding his time. Uh, Olison could not complete the catch and 
and might have run over into that gate on the side. But it wasn't because of the effort by Kenny Pickett and nor the accuracy. That is a tough throw. You're going left, got to square up. And Olison not being, not just can't quite reel it in. Yeah, that little flip at the end of it. Maybe you make a case if he's able to hold on to it and get out of bounds, but just trying to secure it with one last little flip caused it to be incomplete. But that is a tough throw, rolling left and having to throw out in front. Well, they've done quite a bit on the ground. Add to their total, now over 360 yards rushing for Pitt. Remember two weeks ago, Virginia Tech gave up nearly 500 to Georgia Tech and a loss at home. Hokies run defense, 10th in the conference in yards per game. That is going, you imagine, to drop against a pit team that's 12th in the nation in yards per carry at nearly six per, and they are about doubling that today. It has been impressive, no doubt about it. Pick it. Will keep it on third and four. Bit of a stumble at first, and he gets two. What do you do here if you're Pat Narduzzi? You're right at the edge of field goal. Yeah, you don't know how the wind is blowing. I think you go for it. Up 38-22. It looks like oh, he's going to bring the uh, the heavies in. Keep the team, keep the offense on the field, and, and certainly go for it here. I agree with it. It's a long field goal. The wind could affect it. And the way this running game has been producing for Pitt wouldn't be any uh, any hesitation. Extra lineman and Bryce Hargrove. Asked to the fullback is out there left of the formation. Pick it. Olison breaks free. Who needs a first down when you can get six. Thirty one yards. Well, they run behind Aston so much that they window dress it and send him left. They counter it and bring Olison back. But so there's Aston pulling back around the fullback 35. It's so clean, he doesn't have to block anybody. This pit rushing attack is something else. Quadri Olison told us. He used to write book reports about Walter Payton as a kid. That was the running back he idolized. Yeah. Walter would have loved running behind this offensive line, wouldn't he? It has sweet. Been nothing, nothing but sweetness for Pitt. All over the Hokies on the ground. The All-State Saturday kickoff is presented by All-State, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Three hundred and ninety five rushing yards for Pitt. And, uh, we're not even counting Tony Dorsett's performance in the Legends race. <laughs> Panthers lead by twenty three. Want to see a good running back? Join us Monday night in the Bay Area. Giants Niners at 815 Eastern on ESPN. Saquon Barkley is electric. No matter what the Giants record is, that is still the man to watch. Be the marquee running back among young players in the league. On the run back for Virginia Tech, this is Coleman Fox. We are back in 30 seconds. Matching Quadriolis and Jersey number for him. Brian Willis thrown down by Rashad Weaver. This is what you missed in our 30-second break. Well, Weaver not biting on the fake and staying at home made a nice tackle on Ryan Willis. They have both these ends. He and Dwayne Hendricks have had a superior game. I throw complete. And of seven as well as connects with Kumi. You know, this pit defense has a new change in leadership this year. Randy Bates, a first year defensive coordinator after 12 years at Northwestern. He hasn't changed much, and those ferocious ends have been the hallmark of this team. 
part of their recent surge as of late. Gave up 13 to Virginia last week, as well as scampers for first down here. I thought it was interesting talking to Randy yesterday, yeah. 12 years at Northwestern. We asked him, what did you change when you came here? And he said, really not much. Just the terminology changed, and it took him a while to feel like he wasn't speaking a foreign language compared to the rest of the team. Yeah, he learned the defense that was already in place here and adjusted rather than having the entire defensive unit adjust. So still kind of a learning curve for the defensive coordinator. Willis steps it away. Chased out of the play by James Fulston. I thought it was interesting to talk to, to Randy Bates and ask him what is different you're 30 years of coaching what is different about kids today yeah and he said the biggest difference is they want to know why I always have to answer that question instead of you know back when we played coach tells you to do something you just do it and you don't question the authority and now kids are always they want the answer before the job Willis second down swallowed up and he is still on his feet. His knee did not hit the ground. He was in the grass, but not whistled dead. And Ryan Willis is going to take this thing all the way inside the 20. Wow. I am totally blown away as to why that wasn't whistled down a progress or whatever. And how about the heads up play by Ryan Willis to get up and run? Pitt's going to take a timeout. Sure, this play will be looked at. A run of 39 as it stands for Ryan Willis. So Pat Narduzzi gets the timeout. The play was not reviewed, though. Ryan Willis did not go down on this play, though. Weaver had him in the grasp. Yeah, I the reason why I question it is because of. Uh, player safety and you watch so many games where lesser hits draw the flag for roughing and you want to protect the players and trust me I'm a quarterback I want to see you know, guys succeed but that one is just a head scratcher Quincy Patterson is back in the game for Virginia Tech on the handoff Jalen Holston with a first down to the four Jalen Holston getting more time today because Deshaun McLeese is out. An undisclosed injury suffered in the Boston College game. Patterson will continue to commandeer the offense. The freshman from Chicago on the sweep. This is Grimsley, and he gets nothing. Nothing doing. Dane Jackson keeping nice outside leverage, and as they just decided, they, they being the coaching staff of Virginia Tech, that when they get down, inside or this part of the field that they were going to turn things over to Quincy Patterson. Well, the coaches here think he's a special kid, a true freshman playing in his third game. Patterson will tiptoe his way down to about the two. He'll get one more game on the year before he can keep that red shirt for another season with the new year, the four game red shirt rule. Patterson will depart here. Willis back in for third down. Third time we've seen Patterson for the first two downs of a series, and then Willis come in on third. Last time, as you mentioned, down at the goal line earlier in the half. Four down territory here for Virginia Tech. Willis kept it, cross his body, and incomplete. Hazelton the target Jackson with the coverage that's some play by Jackson who's their best cover man and working against a big receiver in Hazelton but he lays out and he goes with the offhand to knock the ball away which gives him a chance for success Hokies are five of five on fourth downs today Willis to the end zone incomplete it was Kuma the target a couple of touchdowns today. Could not get that one with Sean Idowu in coverage. Hokies come up empty on fourth down for the first time. Idowu got a hand in there. The senior makes the play. Both 
He's come up short on fourth and goal. Pitt looks to move to five and one in the coastal. Maybe they'll make Sports Center. Kirby and Fowler give their top four after a week 11 of college football. You go inside the numbers on two is incredible season. And you're not going to want to miss what Stephen A. has to say on the Jimmy Butler deal to the Sixers. How about this? First play of the drive, Olison. Quadri Olison running over Caleb Farley. Olison with a house call. You've got to be kidding. 97 yards. The officials are talking about <clears throat> that flip into the end zone right now. And whether they're going to call it or not, and they may just let it go. But he does a heck of a job. And I mentioned earlier, Farley was the 100 meter champion in the state of North Carolina in high school. And he didn't bring enough rocks in his pocket to that party not to handle big Quadri Olison. Ran him right over in the open field. Some run by the big fella. Wow. 492 rushing yards. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 30, Pittsburgh. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's number 30's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Yeah, they actually could have gotten him for flipping into the end zone and brought it back. But they allowed him some leeway and let the touchdown at least stand. Yeah, that, that's exactly what Justin Fuente is talking about right now. He's wondering why the flag wasn't thrown with a flip into the end zone. Well, it stands as the longest rushing play from scrimmage and Pitt Panther history. We talked about some good running backs today that have played here. Dorsett, Hayward, Martin, Martin McCoy, Lewis, Connor, Olison. That touchdown run by Quadri Olison has broken the single game record for Pitt. Total yards in a game there at 654. And Olison and Hall have had almost unimaginably good days. 23 carries. That's all for 421. Amazing, amazing day for these two senior backs on senior day. And Virginia Tech, after getting hit for 475 on the ground by Georgia Tech a couple of weeks ago, yep. have been blasted for 492 on the ground for Pittsburgh. This was the end of the play for Otis, and this is why it was flagged. Well, that's that's launching from the one and then the flip. And I just, you know, if you have a rule in place, that was the time to throw it, throw the flag, and then that was after the, the play that they actually threw the flag for. I love it. I think you know you should be able to celebrate. Yes, you should. But if you have a rule, you can't celebrate before you get into the end zone, or it's a 15-yard penalty, and the score comes off the board. So I see exactly why Justin Fuente was uh, having a discussion with the officials. That's the second time in the ball game that it's been kind of overlooked. 13 Holston. I hear you. It's it's easy to see Justin Fuente's side on that. But that shouldn't be a rule. Like quad but it's a rule. But it's, it's I, a I, rule. I, agree, I agree with you. I'm it just, is a rule. I'm the score comes general. off the board, and it's a 15-yard penalty. And I don't know a better example. No. Patterson of the game. Again, you figure Holston. a quarterback for good for the rest of this game as Holston takes it for a first down. I guess to my point is that you just don't do those things. Do it after you're in the end zone, and you don't even bring that in, you know, into discussion. We aren't even having that discussion if he just runs through the end zone or flip when you get into the end zone and get the penalty. But that's the rule. The 
is Wheatley for Virginia Tech. And again, for Virginia Tech side of things here, I mean, you've got the bowl streak at 25 in a row. You know, the Hokies now go home. They have Miami next week, who's really struggled to play. They have Virginia, who was ranked until Pitt beat them last week. There is no 12th game at the moment. Maybe they could add one. Some teams have East Carolina rescheduled a game with North Carolina State. As it stands, Virginia Tech has 11 games, and as it stands, they would have to win the next two to be I, bowl eligible at six and I five. I happen to think that they're going to be bowl eligible by season. So I think they win those two games, and here's the reason. They're at home. That's a tough place to go into and play. Uh, I see no reason why they don't beat Miami and Virginia at home to complete the season. Now, they, have, six they have lost a few at home this year. Yeah. Lost to Notre Dame. They lost to Georgia Tech and B.C. Turner takes it for eight yards. Or six and five, rather, with the, the canceled game against East Carolina. And for Justin Fuente, he told us yesterday, look, it, it hasn't been all roses and sunshine this year. We've had a young team. A couple of players were dismissed. He said we made some long-term decisions for the betterment of the program. And, you know, it's not a linear process is what he came back to. We had a talented and hungry group with a veteran locker room year one you had a talented veteran defense year two they lost a lot this year they lost more than they thought they would but yeah he told us it's almost like a year one experience in year three because of all the talent that left earlier was dismissed or graduated it's rough when you've got to play a lot of young players and you're in a competitive not only conference but division in your conference within your conference that's a that's a tough place to be. Inexperience is hard to overcome. Patterson on the rollout for the Hokies. Well, tonight there is a heck of an ACC game coming up shortly. Clemson and Boston College in just about an hour and a half on ABC, 8 Eastern. What are that game? If it's Clemson, they win the Atlantic. If it's BC, the Eagles would control their own destiny in the Atlantic and right now it looks rather plausible that the winner of that game will play the winner of this one with Pitt moving to five and one because of the tiebreakers Pitt will be a game up on Virginia in the coastal the Panthers beat Virginia head to head so Pitt will only need to win one more game at Wake Forest next week at Miami to close it out tough ones on the road they get one of those two and Pitt will be headed to the ACC championship. That is a backwards pass to Savoy. Well, it's going to be rolled down back around the 30 yard down 30 yard line as a as a lateral. Well now the clock has stopped. It did run for a couple of seconds at first. The ruling on the field it was an illegal forward pass. Fourth down. An illegal forward pass is not what that was. Incomplete pass. No wonder we didn't get that. <laughs> no wonder there was no call. <laughs> All right, fourth and nine. Oh, rough been night. a long day. Rough night. So Pitt, you just saw an 85 Please percent reset chance. The game clock to one minute 16 seconds. 116 on the game clock. 85% chance to win the Coastal per FPI. Miami and Virginia have a very slim chance. Patterson fourth down. Going for the end zone. Incomplete in the direction of Turner. Kneel down time for Pitt with a minute 10 to go. Before we go, we want to take a look at folks from the different branches of the armed forces, some of the brave servicemen and women around the world supporting Pitt. Hail to Pitt, the Army ROTC. The Pitt flag and the Virginia Tech flag proudly displayed, honoring America's heroes who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces. We do that especially this week as part of Veterans Week here at ESPN. We thank everyone out there involved in the armed forces for their service and the work they do on a daily basis. I echo everything you're saying, partner, and to keep us safe here and allow us to, to do what we're doing. And a big, big thanks 
We're eternally grateful for that. Yeah, there is Eric Kuma. This has been a rough day for Virginia Tech, and you certainly hope Kuma has not lingered. That injury will not linger to Kuma into next week. Well, Pitt is going to cut into its run total here, which is at 492. Well, you figured it might be some kneel downs, but instead, Jeff George Jr., the backup, will give it to A.J. Davis, who was down. Tony Dorsett was here today to witness a historic rushing performance. You know, Tony had a 99-yard touchdown run in the NFL. Yeah, it was on a Monday night game, a Monday night game against the Minnesota Vikings. I remember it all too well. Looked something uh, like this. I resembled it, but he went untouched. He didn't have to bowl over anybody at the at the end of it. But this was uh, impressive, nonetheless. For uh, Mr. Olson, 97, the longest play from scrimmage in the history of Pitt football, and what a history that is. Kneel down for George will do it. The Pitt Panthers are one win away from the ACC championship. They are bowl eligible. They are five and one in the coastal after a senior day demolition of Virginia Tech's Hokies. What a day for Olison. What a day for Darren Hall. What a day for Pittsburgh. Panthers a game up on UVA. They go to Wake Forest next week, Miami after that. A win, and they are off to the ACC title game against Clemson or Boston College. Frondre Ware, our entire outstanding ESPN crew. Kevin Brown saying so long from Pitt. Whole lot of great college football left on our family of networks today. Don't forget the Clemson-BC game, 8 Eastern on ABC. For now, we take you to ESPN Goal Line.